Good morning, my brothers and sisters. I hope that this, this video find you doing well. And this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is day is starting off really, really chilly. I know it was chilly last um, on last evening as well and yesterday morning. The past two weekends have been chilly, but that's all in God's control. But he's given us a sound mind how to stay warm and do what we need to do. Amen. Amen. We do um, greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and, and welcome you again to join in and fellowship with us with the word for the day that the Lord may have, amen, for us or for you, amen. We just thank God for this opportunity to be before you. We do solicit your prayers for all the sick and the shut-in people who are um, caretakers and taking care of those who are sick. We're just trusting God that, that he will remedy the situation that's going on around us in your home or in your neighbor's house. In this country, in this world, we know that we are in the midst of a pandemic, but we know that God is still God and God is faithful and God is true. And we thank him for what we solicit your prayers for those in bereavement, those who have lost loved ones and who are um, still needing comfort and grieving in the process um, that they've lost their loved ones. So we do pray for their strength as well. And I, I hope that you join in with me and pray for their strength because it may be their turn today, but it may be our turn tomorrow. Amen. There is a word um, from the Lord today. We've, we had a sermonette back um, maybe nine, 10 months ago entitled the same thing, but this time we have the actual sermon being preached. Amen. So we're going to call this um, convinced, but not converted the remix. <laughs> okay. This is an actual sermon. We um, were in revival and we were preaching this message and, um, you know, just want to do it again, um, but this way in a different setting. And we hope that you will enjoy it. It's going to come in two parts. It's going to be part one today and it's going to be part two on Wednesday, if the Lord will allow. And that comes from second Peter the second chapter, amen, somewhere around the 19th, 20th, 21st verses, and um, we hope that you enjoy it. But before we get into our word, we ask that you join us in a word of prayer. Dear Father, we come in the name of Jesus, thanking you for being so good to us, thanking you for your grace and your mercy, thanking you for another opportunity to pray, Father, to get it right with you. Father, I ask that you continue to bless, continue to keep us, even in the midst of all the things that's going on in this world. Keep us. Hold us and out with all faith. I know that you have us. Father, and I know that you're going to bring us out in the name of Jesus. And Father, we ask that you continue to bless this ministry, not only this ministry, but all ministries that are rooted and planted in your name and doing your will and not their own thing. And Father, I ask that you, you continue to bless those who are who are who are following Jesus's name, not following some preacher, not following some some name other than Jesus, but following Jesus's name. Continue to bless, continue to strengthen us, continue to give us that that power and that sound mind. And Father, I ask that you that you bless the hearers of this word, not only the hearers but the doers of this word as well. These and other blessings we ask in Thy Son Jesus's name. Amen. Now for part one of Convinced But Not Converted, the remix. Amen. I hope you enjoy. Amen. Tonight, tonight, our scripture lesson will be coming from 2 Peter. From 2 Peter, the second chapter. 2 Peter follows 1 Peter. <laughs> and it comes before 1 John. 2nd chapter of 2 Peter. You found it. We're going to ask you to stand, please. 2 Peter. 2nd chapter. This is 2nd. This is Peter's second epistle to the church. Amen. Let your fingers do the walking down to the 
20th verse. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. Now notice it didn't say you wouldn't mess up. But if it said if you overcome, it says that the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is turned to his own vomit again and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. You may be seated. I'd like to speak to you tonight on the auspices of the Holy Ghost from the thought convinced but not converted. Convinced but not converted. It is my my duty, my assignment, my obligation, my burden to declare to you today that if you do not have God's Holy Spirit dwelling within you, you are in trouble. As a pastor, it would be remiss of me or negligent of me to say that you're all right just being saved and not receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. It's good to come forward and confess that you are a sinner and accept the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior and be baptized in the pool, in the creek, in the pond. But that's not the end of the story. You've only been convinced but you haven't been converted. Are y'all going to help me preach this? Yes. Convinced, as Mr. Webster says, means persuaded. Convinced means influenced. Convinced means won over. Convinced means that you've come over to my side. Converted means transformed. Converted means changed. Converted means made new. Converted means totally different. And there's a difference between being convinced and being converted. Convinced means that you have accepted the Lord Jesus and that he is the son of God and that he died for your sins on Calvary. But converted means that you have done that and now the spirit of God dwells in you to give you power to endure all things until Christ comes back for his church. Are y'all going to be with me? And if you are Convinced alone, you do not have the power to stand against the enemy. I, I need some word to prove that. The, 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 the Bible says the, the, the deacon by the name of Philip has been elevated in the spirit to the office of 
evangelist. All right, all right. Philip was sent into Samaria well, to preach Jesus. Yeah, yeah. But in Samaria, it was under a spell of a sorcerer by the name of Simon. All right, all right. Now, now, Simon was a man that they thought had some great power. Y'all, y'all, y'all know, y'all know how it is. Let, let, let me get, let me get country with you. When, when, whenever you had a problem with somebody, and you needed to get them off of your back, you knew the person to go to and ask them to give you a little dust. Y'all like like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. They, they give you a little dust or they, they tell you to say a few words or they tell you how to walk around their house or they tell you to cook some food and put certain things in it. And hey, amen. Simon was somebody who practiced witchcraft. He, he practiced voodoo. Today we call him the root worker. Come on, this is the country. I know y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen. And, and everybody was afraid of Simon because he, he, they thought that he was some great man of God with power. But when Philip came to Samaria and started preaching Jesus to those folks, the Bible says that demons start running everywhere. Yeah. Hey, amen. That's something about demons. They can't stand the name of Jesus. Can I get a witness in the house? Not only preaching the name of Jesus, but he started healing in the name of Jesus. He started delivering in the name of Jesus. And when folks start seeing all of this happening, they were convinced that Jesus is the name that we should follow. So when they were convinced that Jesus was the Son of God, the Bible says that Philip baptized them. And not only all of them were convinced, but even Simon the sorcerer believed that Jesus was the Son of God and he was baptized, but he was only convinced, but not converted. He was influenced. He was persuaded. He came on Philip's side and believed that Jesus was the Son of God. Jesus was the Savior. Jesus had died for his sins and was baptized, but he was not converted. So I need more word to prove that. The Bible says in, in, in that 8th chapter, somewhere in Acts around the 8th chapter, around the 14th verse, it said that when Philip came, they received the word. They received the word. They were, they were convinced. They received the word. But in verse 15, it said that news got back to Jerusalem and the apostles heard what was going on in Samaria and they sent Peter and John down there to pray for them that they may receive the Holy Ghost. Uh, are y'all are with me? Amen. And when they came down to Samaria and they started praying for folks and laying hands on folks, when they laid hands on them, they start receiving the Holy Ghost. And when they received the Holy Ghost, they became converted. But Simon, who was only convinced, still had some old man in it. <laughs> And if you're only convinced, that old man will rise up in you every now and then. Y'all so saved tonight? Y'all so saved tonight? A amen. You can't have accepted the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior and been baptized. You can sit in the choir. You can sit on the deacon board. You can sit in the usher board. You can even sit in the pulpit. But if you don't have God's Holy Spirit in you, you're liable to do anything. I wish I had some help up in here. Let somebody step on that left pinky toe with that corn that's been bothering you and see what comes out of your mouth if you hadn't been converted. When Peter and 
John came down and they were praying for him, laying hands on them, the old man and Simon started rising up. And Simon came to him and tapped him on the shoulder and said, how much? How much? would you take for that gift right there? I want to go around laying hands on folk and giving them the Holy Ghost. But in Simon's heart, Simon wanted a way to make more money. (laughs) Amen. So that showed him that he was only convinced and not converted because Peter told him, he said, man, you're going to die with your money. Are y'all with me in here? Amen. And anything can happen when you're only convinced but not converted. Amen. When convinced, as Peter says, you have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In other words, you've been persuaded or influenced to the fact that you are a sinner and you need to believe in who Jesus is. But if you're not converted... You will not have the power to endure the temptations of believing other spirits. First John 4 and 1 says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. But if you don't have the Holy Spirit, how can you try the spirits? That, that's a problem we have in church these days. Just because somebody has REV in front of their name. They think that they were sent by God. Just because somebody can quote a few scriptures, fulfill that they're sent by God. Let me tell you something tonight, and this is free. Satan knows the Bible like the back of his hand. Amen. Do do, do I have to convince you of that? When Jesus was in the wilderness and and, and for 40 days and 40 nights and fasting and Satan came to him and said, if you are who you say you are, turn these stones of bread and eat. And Jesus said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Uh Uh-huh. Satan said, I'm going to get you, so I'm going to use the word on you. Now that devil is a bad boy to quote the word to the word. That, 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 that might have went over your head right now. A- 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 amen. 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 You got to know God in order to know God. I don't think, I don't think y'all got that. A- a- amen. Amen. In order to know God, you got to have God. No one knows you like you do. (laughs) Are are y'all with me? So in order to know God, God has to identify himself. And the only way God can identify himself is that he has to see himself. I I done messed somebody up in here. Amen. When Jesus says that I and the Father are as one, when he told his disciples, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Now, I got to have some God in me in order for God to see himself in me. So in order for me to see God, I got to know who God is, and he's got to be in me to know him. I can't shout at the word unless I have the word down in me. Uh, are, are, y'all, are y'all with me? And I can't shout unless I've been converted because God only knows God. I, I, I done messed somebody up in here. All right, watch this, watch this. First Timothy 4 and 1 says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Amen. There there, there are things that go on in the church these days that are not of God. There there are things being taught in the church these days that are not of God. 
but I'm finding so many people flocking to those churches but in the church that the true gospel is being preached you find one coming every now and then Amen. If Pastor Carlisle was preaching about how to make a dollar and out of 15 cents and and how to get how to get healthy and wealthy and all of this stuff, Lakeside would be full every Sunday. But if you're preaching the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life, you'll see every once in a while. Amen, somebody. But if you have the Spirit of God in you, you'll be able to discern what is and what is not of God. We're stop that right there. We're going to stop it right there. And we hope that we, we've said enough that will get you interested in coming back on Wednesday night to hear the conclusion of Convinced and Not Converted, the remix. We hope that you'll, you'll come back and hear the conclusion of that because so many people in the church are only convinced but they have not received or not even asked for the gift of the Holy Ghost sent from Jesus to keep us. That is the conversion power right there. It changes our mindset. It changes who we used to be to who we are to become. We got to receive the Holy Spirit. So that's what we're talking about, being convinced and only believing, but then being converted in receiving the spirit of God, where God actually dwells in us. And every now and then we can feel him moving on the altar of our heart. It may not cause us to shout, may not cause us to wave our hand, but we'll know that it's the Lord that's speaking to us from the inside out. Amen. And I want to thank you for joining with us today and also supporting your continued support of this ministry. We just thank God for you. Share this word with brothers and sisters and friends and family, wherever they are. Share this word with them. And we just thank you. That's the way we spread the gospel. Even during this pandemic, it cannot stop the word of God from going out. I don't care how you look at it. It cannot stop the word of God from going out. I don't care if they put bars on the church doors. It cannot stop the word of, of the word of God from spreading and going out. It will accomplish what it sets out to do. Amen. Amen. We also like to thank you for your continued financial support of this ministry. Um, Miss, but you do your part and we just thank God for you. But we thank God for the, the supporters and the covenant partners that we have as well. And for those who, you know, you do your drive by and you come by and you speak and and you bring your, your your offering and your tithes to the storehouse. Amen. We will be back, or the trustee committee will be back on Saturday, February the 12th at 10 a.m. That's Saturday, February the 12th at 10 a.m. Not this Saturday, but the following Saturday, the second Saturday um, of the month. So make sure that you do what you're supposed to do and, you know, do your obligations. Amen. This goes... This is for what you're doing for the Lord, not for me or for the church, but this is what you're doing for the Lord. And, and it is required that you support the ministry. And we just thank God for that. Also, we thank our covenant partners who are being fed through what God is giving us. We just thank God for you. Amen. Mizpah is doing what they're supposed to do. But we thank God for you for touching and agreeing with us in our endeavor and in this ministry. We just thank God for you, and I promise you, God will continue to shower his blessings upon you. And if you are too far away to just do a drive-by and you're mailing in, that address is Mispah Baptist Church, Post Office Box 1275, Baxley, Georgia, 31515. That's Mispah Baptist Church, Post Office Box 1275, Baxley, Georgia, 31515. I got to get out of here, and we just thank God for you. As I said in the previous, before the message, continue to pray for our sick and shut in, our caretakers, essential workers, continue to pray for those in bereavement. Amen. Everybody needs prayer. I don't care if you're doing good or you're doing bad. Everybody needs prayer. Pray for me. Call me out by name. Amen. I do ask that you pray for the leadership of this country and uh, of the world. Just pray that these leaders make decisions that are God-based and not 
people based amen with which means that they're basing what they feel and what they want to do and they have their own agendas but god can change the hearts of kings and we just thank god for that so pray for our leaders whether you like them or not pray for them because in this season they're in that position and god put them there in this season amen so pray for them and when you go out when you go out you stay safe make sure you're wearing your mask make sure you're doing what you're supposed to do wear your mask wash your hands and watch your distance make sure these you avoid these crowds that are out there amen so do what you're supposed to do all right i'm gonna leave you alone i love you all and i ask that you um you take care of yourself as you take care of each other okay now until wednesday join us for the conclusion of this message so until wednesday so long <laughs>